Is that true? Engineers can't spell? I thought I could spell pretty good. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. Today we're going to focus on mass timber and multifamily housing and try to answer the question, is it a good fit for your project? Now, we're going to break this down by starting to look at the different typologies in which we have seen mass timber used in multifamily projects. Hopefully that can start to inform you of the different sweet spots or areas where it might fit best for different multifamily projects. Now, mass timber has been used in housing projects across a wide spectrum, everything from single family home construction all the way up to the currently under construction 25 story multifamily project, the Ascent Tower in Milwaukee. So clearly it's able to meet housing needs across a wide spectrum. But in today's video, we're really going to hone in on the three most common types of multifamily housing that we have seen mass timber used in and help you understand what are the design, code compliance and construction implications of choosing mass timber and what are the design flexibilities that you have available to you. All right, so first we'll take a look at the different structural systems or typologies that we have seen mass timber in multifamily housing most commonly used. And the first one is a fully mass timber structure. So mass timber bearing walls, interior and exterior, and mass timber floor panels, mass timber roof panels. Some people call this a honeycomb style of construction. Some people call this uh, vertical and horizontal systems with mass timber. Going back a decade or so ago, this was actually where we started to see the use of tall mass timber construction in international projects, in housing in particular. So projects like the Forte Tower in Australia, projects like Stadhouse, Murray Grove in London, Origine in Quebec. These are all mass timber, fully mass timber, multifamily projects that all happen to be in the nine to 13 story range. So that's kind of the first typology that we see mass timber used in multifamily housing. It ha that style of construction hasn't really been adopted widely yet in the US. There are some alternatives to that and we'll express those as we get a little bit later in today's video. The second typology that we're seeing mass timber used in multifamily projects, especially more so here in the US, is a hybrid style of construction where we're using light frame wood bearing wall systems supporting horizontal mass timber floor and roof panels. So this is a hybrid approach where really we're utilizing the strengths of both of those systems, combining them into a single project. And as far as the, the height limits and the code implications of doing something like this hybrid style of construction, this is where we would generally be looking at the International Building Code construction type options type three or type five. Now, depending on which of those we choose, we can go usually four or five stories. Type five construction allows four stories of multifamily housing. Type three construction allows five stories of multifamily housing. And that is the same regardless of if it's a fully light frame wood structure or this hybrid approach, some mass timber, some light frame wood construction. Now that five stories can be built on top of a podium. And we're seeing this very commonly with the podium style buildings, you know, four over one, five over two, where you're able to really maximize the overall building height in feet of 85 feet measured from grade, but the number of stories of wood construction is measured from the top of that podium. So that's why you can still get the five stories of wood frame construction, whether it's just wood frame or combined with mass timber on top of the podium. Some examples of projects that have used this hybrid style of mass timber and light frame wood construction in multifamily projects here in the US Cirrus Project in Denver, there's the Postmark Apartments in Shoreline, Washington, Project One in Oakland, the Lost Rabbit Condos. And then the third typology that we see mass timber used in multifamily projects, especially here in the US, is a post and beam style of construction. Now, most of the time, this post and beam framing does consist of glue laminated timber. Some projects have also used a hybrid style where it's maybe a structural steel frame supporting mass timber floor and roof panels. But generally speaking, we are looking at an all timber structure, but opposed to the timber bearing wall system, this is using the timber post and beam system supporting horizontal mass timber panels. Now, this can be used in low to mid rise projects. And a few examples of that are the Wythe Avenue project in Brooklyn, 
timber lofts, like I mentioned in Milwaukee, as well as the Barracuda condos in Wisconsin. But we are starting to see the application of this post and beam style of construction in multifamily mass timber projects, especially apply as we start to do more and more tall mass timber projects. Now, the code changes that have allowed these taller mass timber projects are introduced in the 2021 IBC, and that is the creation of three new construction types, type 4A, 4B, and 4C. Depending on which of those construction types you're looking at, you can go up to 18 stories for 4A, 12 stories for 4B, or eight stories for 4C in a multifamily occupancy. And there's varying levels of fire resistance ratings for those systems, as well as the amount of timber that can be exposed on the interior of the building. We are starting to see particular interest in the 4C and 4B categories. Right now, we're assisting on about 120 tall mass timber projects throughout the United States, and about two-thirds of those are multifamily projects in that 6 to 12-story range. And this is kind of a sweet spot. It's been somewhat of a dead zone for multifamily development where we have projects now, like I mentioned earlier, that are going maybe five stories of wood frame construction. Maybe that's over a podium. And then generally speaking, once you go taller than that, you're having to go quite a bit taller in order to make the performer work, make the site and land costs work, to get unit density required due to the added cost of the structural building materials that require you to go taller. So in order to do that, this kind of six to 12 story range has been a bit of a dead zone. So that's where Mass Timber is really creating some new opportunities. Examples of projects in this range include the intro project under construction right now in Cleveland, Carbon 12 in Portland, Oregon. One particular sweet spot that I thought worth mentioning because we are seeing a lot of interest in that is Using mass timber in a 4C style of construction, that allows you to go up to 85 feet, and that is actually the same as you would get in a 4HT structure or a 3A structure. The difference, though, is that those options that I just mentioned, 4HT and 3A, allow you to go five stories of wood frame and or mass timber construction. 4C allows you to go up to eight stories with mass timber construction. It doesn't allow this hybrid approach of light frame wood, so it generally would have to be all mass timber, usually in a post and beam style of construction. And the sweet spot that we're seeing develop is keeping these projects just under 85 feet overall building height that allows them to be type 4C construction, and then also keeping the highest occupied floor just under 75 feet above the lowest level of fire department access. And that, of course, is the limitation that kicks you over or under the high rise provisions. So if you can keep overall building height just under 85 feet, highest occupied floor just under 75 feet, then you are able to do potentially seven or maybe even eight stories of multifamily, all mass timber construction, no podium necessary, and stay under those high rise provisions. So that's really something where we're seeing a lot of projects have interest, again, filling that need where there's been a bit of a dead zone for multifamily development. Now, just to touch on a few of the key design decisions for multifamily mass timber projects, I would say the top three that come to mind are fire resistance, acoustics, and MEP integration. I talked some earlier about construction type choices, and those choices do have a direct correlation to what are the required fire resistance ratings. Those required fire resistance ratings have therefore a direct impact on what are the most efficient member sizes floor panels, thicknesses, those types of things. And that really can start to drive the cost conversation. So making sure you're deciding early on what is the most efficient construction type for your mass timber multifamily project will really help dial in those costs later on. The second, as I mentioned, is acoustics. We've done a video on mass timber acoustics design before, of course, very important with multifamily projects. And the third thing that I mentioned is MEP integration. And really this just requires some very early on thought to how are the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, sprinkler elements it's going to integrate with your multifamily project? Do you have a double loaded corridor? Are you running main lines around a central core? How are those being distributed to units? Can you minimize penetrations through mass timber panels, especially the beam systems that are supporting the floor panels? All of those things are important discussions to have early on in your mass timber projects. Well, I thank you so much for making it to the end of today's video. Until next time, we'll see you later.